there's about 25 million people in the world whose livelihoods are all about coffee. The coffee matters, and it really matters in Rwanda, where it is the most important manufactured, meaning processed, crop in the country. It's one of the main export crops. It gives livelihood and sustenance and a way of life to many, many farmers in the country. Rwanda coffee benefits so many people involved in the production chain, from the farmer to the people working in different aspects of the value chain. And everybody makes a great effort to deliver the best product possible. Rwandan coffee is considered some of the best and rarest coffee in the world. However, buyers discovered that at times, Rwandan coffee had a strange taste, like rotten potatoes. This potato taste posed a major barrier to Rwanda being part of the high-value, high-return specialty coffee market. Coffee is all about taste. So if something gets through that interferes with that, then you're really disturbing coffee at a very, very fundamental level. And as a farmer, you try and do everything to clear all defects from the coffee that you're going to sell. So when you get back a report that there's a potato taste, it's a really difficult moment. Determining if a coffee bean has potato taste has itself been a conundrum. A coffee bean may be physically handled more than six times as it makes its way from farm to market. Just one bad bean mixed in with the coffee from many farmers is enough for the whole batch to be rejected. From a scientific level, there are a lot of interesting and really juicy questions at play. The first was, what exactly is the nature of this potato taste defect? And that science was not yet available. There was a theory, but it hadn't been conclusively proven that a particular insect was to cause for this. It was theorized that the Antestia insect found in East Africa was the cause of the potato taste defect. I find that beans damaged by Antestia bug was mainly the source of a potato taste. In 2011, entomologist Daniel Rukazambuga and the University of Rwanda won the Global Knowledge Initiative's Link competition to tackle their country's challenge with this coffee pest. Link was created by GKI to assist countries to identify their own complex problems and solve them by connecting local and international people and resources. So I got excited because when you win a scientific research application, you feel happy. And you know now I got a, I'm, going to, I'm going to get a team to help me to work. So it, it, was, it was at least a starting point. So LINK was really designed to meet both researchers and farmers at a moment that they were being compelled to work together, but were really scratching their heads as to how. The key is first to establish a link relationship between antestia bug and the potato test. Taking on this challenge, GKI built up a team including entomologists, engineers, policy experts, and many other specialists. Together, they set out to search for evidence on how a coffee bean became infected. Only then could a solution to stop contamination be found. Because the control of one insect requires the knowledge of one insect, how it lives, how it increases at all time, then you can manage that insect. The link competitions was very important to Rwanda and to Rwanda Coffee because it brought together all the stakeholders to make sure that we address the single most challenging problem that was how to control the Antestia bug and how to reduce the potato taste in our coffee. The link project has had far-reaching results for Rwanda, for its economy and for its people. At a small farmer's level, if we can control Antestia bug properly, it means their yield can increase by 30%. And by increasing yield, that means you are increasing also income with the farm. To me, as a farmer, the greatest benefit of having the link research is that we understand what it causes, we understand the solutions, and our buyers know now, because the trust has been built, that we are working together, so potato taste is an issue that we know how to deal, and it's no longer a mystery. The Rwandan Coffee Project was only a first step. Link networks today are successfully working across East and Southern Africa.
Now GKI is poised to unleash this model to support other communities globally in tackling what seem like daunting challenges. There's a crying need for the GKI approach. Largely, development has been done a little piece at a time. And that's not how lives are transformed. Lives are transformed by bringing many people and many skills into the conversation. We need an organization that was really about helping connect up people, connect up the resources, and, and create a playbook. What the Global Knowledge Initiative has here, we call collaborative innovation. Everybody talks about it today. Everybody wants a knowledge society. Everybody wants to network. Doing it is a bit harder than talking about it, and GKI is doing it. We're still just at the very beginning as GKI, but I think we are so serious about finding partners that want to take on that challenge. You know, can you imagine if seven billion people, nine billion maybe by 2050, actually knew what it meant to solve their own problems and make a change? I think that's such an empowering future to imagine.